Isn't this a pretty little glass house? Let me tell you about this pretty little glass house. So it started in part because I bought an orchid that needed a lot of humidity. And even though I had it placed with its roots directly next to a humidifier, it, it was getting very dried out and I never seemed to be able to keep it happy. But also it started because somebody posted a link to a $200,000 US Tiffany miniature glass house. Now, I don't believe that that Tiffany miniature glass house is actually in any way meant to be used as a terrarium. It is handmade, all the little glass windows open and close. It's made of sterling silver and all of the little windows are set in the sterling silver. It is a ridiculous object. It is an object that my parents would have immediately described as conspicuous consumption. With so many things in the world, that, you know, so many people who are hungry and people who are homeless, it's the sort of thing that makes you think, let's just go ahead and eat the rich. So, and, and I want that tiny little glass house more than anything. Well, more than almost anything. I have to admit there's a Tiffany tiara that I've also had my eye on for a very long time. So I thought, well, obviously, never ever in my life, not even if I could afford it, not even if it was throwaway money, could I justify that. And I'll never have that sort of money as throwaway money, needless to say. But I bet there are other little glass houses that look like greenhouses and I bet I could have one of those. And lo, indeed, there are. This is a terrarium made by a company called H. Potter. Um, you can get them on Etsy, which led me to think it was a little bit handmade, but you can also get them on Amazon, so it turns out really not so much. But nevertheless, I did enjoy the way it had this look about it of being a very old fashioned little greenhouse. And then I thought, well, I got this because my little orchid, well, I got this because I really, really, really want the Tiffany uh, greenhouse, but I got this so my little or orchid can stay well in it, but it should be fine if I just put the orchid in. I don't actually need to plant it out just yet. I, I can hold off. I'm not planning on buying any more plants just now. Um, let's not plant this terrarium until spring. So guess what? It's not spring in the Northern Hemisphere right now. <laughs> it's not even close. It's not even winter yet, but this is already planted out. What happened? What happened to my resolve? What happened to my plans to not buy any more plants? Well, a couple of things happened. First of all, even though it was a cute little greenhouse, it wasn't actually very well sealed if you don't have it planted out. There were gaps and the humidity was getting out and my, my little orchid was staying pretty dry regardless of what happened. So I thought, oh, that's fine. I'll, um, what I'll do is I'll just put in some substrate. Uh, I'll, I'll get that, I'll buy the substrate for a terrarium. And I used a little bit of pebbles and some charcoal to make a good terrarium substrate. And then I thought, and I'll just put the dirt in on top of it. I have plenty of tropical plant dirt, uh, potting soil. Um, I have, I don't have my own blend or anything fancy. I just, you know, get the tropical plant stuff from uh, Repot Me. So I'm like, okay, that should help because ideally then having the substrate in there and having the soil, it's going to block some of the space. Um, it's not going to let as much humidity out and the soil will hold some moisture. Okay, I'm still not going to buy any more plants. Right, so obviously that went very well. Like many of us during this lockdown, I've actually been extremely cautious and I haven't been leaving the house very much. I, I do have the privilege of having a job which uh, allows me to work from home 100% of the time. And so I haven't left the house very much except once every three months I have to go down to the nearest local hub, little uh, square with businesses and get my prescription medications. So I'm very fortunate to only have to pick them up once every three months. And it's a nice sort of cadence for leaving the house right now. It's, it's not too often. <laughs> um, 
I'm also lucky that I've got lots of space at home and I'm not the sort of person who likes to go out all the time. But, but, since the last time I had been down to get my prescriptions, a plant shop had opened in the square. So normally what I do when I go to get my prescription is I stop by the French patisserie uh, because it has the best macarons I've ever tasted and also other lovely French pastries. So that's fine. But this time, my partner said, oh, you could go to the plant shop. And I said, hey, remember how I said I wasn't buying any more plants until spring? And she said, you'd be supporting a local business. I think you should buy plants. Well, what was I supposed to do with that? Not buy plants? Really? <laughs> Any excuse, obviously. So I did go into the plant shop and I did pick up a tiny, tiny maidenhair fern, um, this little polka dot plant, this lovely little phytonia, and these other miniature ferns. I'm not actually sure exactly what miniature ferns they are, but they're so beautiful and they just fit into the space so perfectly. So by that point, I had to admit, I'm doing it. I'm planting out a terrarium. I ordered some moss online. And of course, as soon as I ordered the moss, it turned out that it was the first freeze of the year. So I've been very nervous, but the moss does seem to have taken care of itself pretty well and has held up pretty well. And I got this one lovely little cushion moss, which I put in pride of place. And also, I said, well, I could have one little ornament in my terrarium. And a friend suggested that I put in a Parisian lamp post. And I liked their suggestion, but when I went hunting online, I, I fell in love with this teeny, tiny, teeny Parisian subway entrance. Well, I put the subway entrance in and I realized almost straight away that I wasn't happy with it because it didn't go anywhere. It just sat on top of the dirt. So that is when I made stairs for it. And now there's a tiny, teeny miniature subway entrance with stairs going down into whatever is underneath this miniature orchid. I'm not really treating this as a closed terrarium. Uh, I am opening it occasionally to air and then I am re-spritzing water into it to up the humidity again. Um, I think it would probably be okay as a closed terrarium, but there's no particular reason why I, I should uh, worry about is it going to survive that way? Is everything going to be okay? Um, I feel I enjoy letting it get a little air circulation and then giving it that spritz again. And, and I will say that I really do think that everything in there is doing very well right now. Um, we'll see how they do over winter. It is not directly under one of my uh, grow lights, but it's pretty close to it. And I do think that everything has been settling in pretty well and looking pretty healthy. I mean, this, the Fetonia is just going crazy. It's, it has doubled in size since I got it. And the polka dot plant is looking lovely too. And the ferns are, are pretty solidly growing. Uh, the, the maiden hair had a poor root system when I got it, but she seems to have settled down too. So that is the story of how I did not have $200,000 to waste on a Tiffany sterling silver greenhouse with working glass windows. Oh, but I still made something beautiful and with fun miniatures and I think that I'll probably do more of this because I really enjoyed it.